Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to IHWE Radio. My name is David Fuller. It is Wednesday night, February 26th. We are coming to you live from Fort Worth, Texas, the home of IHWE Professional Wrestling. It is a cold night here in Fort Worth, but we're going to have an outstanding show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have got uh, man. Facebook is just blowing up today with this, with these new politics. We're well, not the new politicians, but politicians going off about this, that, and the other. So I'm gonna go right back here to my studio and get talking with ICB Radio on the line. We're kind of switching roles tonight. We're tagging out my co-host Michael McCurdy, the author of Encyclopedia WCCW. Yes, he is still employed for the time being. He is here. He is live from California. Welcome, Michael, to the show. Big night tonight. Yeah, we got a really big night tonight, David. Uh, as you said, I am still employed. I want everyone out there to know, next week, I'm taking my chair back. I'm coming back as the host. Don't worry. I'm not going to let David sit on his soapbox for too long. We're, we're going to be good. All right. Well, uh, uh, we got an interesting show tonight. We're going to have uh, Michael is going to be involved in a program that's coming up on March twenty uh, twenty second. March twenty second. March twenty second, and and where California? What city? March twenty second, Eureka, California, Redwood Acres Fairground. Bell time seven p.m. Doors open at six p.m. And while I'm putting a little plug in here. I want to say hello to, hopefully, a lot of listeners here in Humboldt County, because tonight, IHWE Radio is also live through, I believe it's called Humboldt Podcast. So we're being broadcast in my neck of the woods. I hope I have some fans out there that are listening. But please, buy some tickets for this show. It's going to be a great card, March 22nd. All right, we're going to be getting up close and personal with some of the action that's going to be happening on March 22nd in Eureka, California. We're going to have Joe Sousa on, and I believe some other guests, but uh, this is live radio, so we will see what happens. All right, ladies and gentlemen, also tonight we are going to have Fred Urban, who is the president of Old School Wrestling Federation, Old School Wrestling, I should say, in Texas. He's going to be on talking about a big show. He's got coming up this weekend in the Permation Basin. He's going to have Mickey James and Chavo Guerrero are both going to be on that program. So, uh, all right. Well, the big news this past week was the launch of the WWE Network. And there has been so much that has been said about the I, about the, excuse me, about the WWE Network. Uh, there has been, uh, initially there were a lot of issues. I will tell you my experience with the WWE Network. And then Michael is going to share his experience with the WWE Network. And we will move on because there's really not anything else to add as far as the WWE Network. Uh, however, on Monday morning, I logged in at 7.45 Central Standard Time, and I did not think I was going to be able to... Okay, I'm getting uh, notes on my Facebook about our show tonight. Okay, this is live radio, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, about 15 to 10 till on Monday morning, Central Standard Time, I was able to log in and uh, woke up, and uh, I knew it was going to go live at 8 o'clock. And I was like, all right, let us just let me get ready so I'm ready to go. Uh, logged in, and I uh, logged into WWE.com, already had an account, did that the night before, and it said, um, it said, by the network, purchase the network. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So uh went ahead and uh went ahead and uh doing two things at once folks, so I'm not I'm not trying to uh sound like this. Went ahead, did all the information, logged in at Ten Till, pulled up World Class Championship Wrestling, the only world class show that is on the network right now. And uh, you know, started started watching. Didn't have a problem. Uh, started checking it out, and, uh, you know, that was it. Uh, throughout the day, I tried some other things, and, uh, you know, I didn't really have any problems. 
uh, I, I had a few problems with WCW Great American Bass 1996 giving us issues. Uh, so, but I just thought that was, you know, a first day jitters. Uh, I knew that a lot of people were trying to access it. Uh, but I got on, and then by the middle of the afternoon, the video on demand stopped working, and it's kind of been there ever since. Uh, I'll, I'm lucky to get an intro pay per view out before it stops working. I talked to WWE Network Support. They have told me, try it 24 hours. Uh, I know yesterday they put out an edict that said by 6 p.m. it should be working, and it still isn't, and that's across the board. Most of the video on demand stuff is not working for pretty much anybody. Very few people are getting through, debating, depending on what device you're using. I want to watch it on my Roku, on my big flat screen TV at home. It's cool to watch it on the phone. It's cool to watch it on my tablet. It's cool to watch it on my computer. But one of the main reasons I signed up for this is because I can – Log on to Roku, knock it into my TV, and watch it on my TV. And that's a big drawing thing for me. So that's where we stand right now. As far as the live channel, the content is superb. The raw pre-show and post-show were excellent. I'm really looking forward to NXT Arrival tomorrow night. Uh, I was one of the lucky ones that signed up, got through right away. However, on the flip side, Michael is one of the ones that had to wait for a couple to a few hours to get signed in. So, Michael, why don't you share your WWE Network experience in the nicest way but honest way possible? Okay, well, first off, I started about 6.30, 6.45, I think is when I started. Um, wouldn't go on, wouldn't go on, wouldn't log on. Finally, after maybe an hour, I was able to log in. All right, cool. I set everything up. I have my account set up. I go ahead. I punch in all my information. I start to do my credit card billing information. Halfway through my credit card information, it stops. It boots me off. So I wait about another hour, get on, go through the whole thing again, get to my credit card information, put it in. I hit submit, crashes. I don't get a confirmation email. I get nothing. Finally, about 10 45 in the morning, about four hours later, I get on, put in my information, put in my credit card information, boom, got it, finally. took me four hours. I'm checking things out. First thing I decided to look at is Bunkhouse Stampede from uh, WCW back in 1985, I think it was. It's playing just fine. I was watching it, saw Nikita Koloff, we're doing good. Got back around, home from work around 3, 34 o'clock, logged in. Got my Roku box, specifically bought a Roku box to hook it up to the TV because I have the 15-inch screen, high definition. I want the good stuff. Go in to watch something, nothing. Try to load this, nothing. Try to load this one, nothing. The only thing I have is, like you, the live stream. The live stream, I will admit, is excellent, great quality, high quality. I've seen this is NXT three times. I've seen WrestleMania Rewind a couple times. And I did get to see the Raw post-show. So far, that's been my experience with the WWE Network. Unfortunately, now news is coming out. Supposedly, they are now saying it may take several days to get the issues worked out and get it all in where video on demand will work. Now, I can access the shows. They'll run for maybe 30 seconds to a minute, and then I get booted off. And like I said, they're now saying several days for this to uh, get under control. So definitely not a great start for the network. Yes, there's going to be issues. They estimated probably maybe a quarter million people signed up on day one. That's an estimate. So a lot of people, a lot of issues. Unfortunately, you don't want to have a lot of issues when you first start, especially when the first week is supposed to be free. I see that's going to be their problem. Maybe they're going to extend it for a little bit of time so you get a free week. I don't know. Like you said, live stream, great. I would like to see NXT arrival tomorrow, but unfortunately I will be at work. And hopefully, maybe, I doubt it, but they might have the on-demand thing working by that point in time so I can watch it on demand. If not, I'm going to have to wait until a few days down the road. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and, uh, you know, yeah, and I agree with you. 
Uh, my, I, I get frustrated every time I try it now because it, it should be working. At the same time, that there's no way they could have prepared for this. I mean, you know, websites crash. I'm sure WWE has the best, you know, website, the best people working for them because they have a content-driven website. They get the millions of hits per week, uh, I dare say per day. So I'm sure that they just weren't prepared for the, the week one to go like this. At the same time, they should have been. Uh, would have, should have, could have. I don't work there. Uh, hopefully it does get worked out soon. So people like you, Michael, people who do work in the evening, will be able to come home and watch that content that they did miss live. I think once it gets going, it's going to be fantastic. I love the way it's structured. I love the stuff they put on in between shows. The pre- and post-game show thing is awesome. I cannot wait for NXT tomorrow. But there's going to be issues. It's going to happen even after they get it fixed. Every once in a month, there's going to be issues. At the same time, I think if I have a choice, if if I have a choice between, okay, uh, I have a choice between uh, the live stream messing up and the video on demand stream messing up, the live stream is where the pay-per-views are going to come on. So obviously the, that the live channel is working as well as it is is a really good sign. Uh, so that means more than likely there won't be any issues during WrestleMania, which is great. But at the same time, one of the – okay, there are two reasons why people signed up for this. Number one was the live pay-per-views every month that they could get for only nine ninety five. At the same time, another reason, maybe more than that, since so many people, so many old-school fans – have left and they're not watching the current product. Uh, they they signed up for the the opportunity to have every pay per view, well asterisk quote every pay per view that WWE, WCW, and ECW put out, with the exception of a few of them, at their fingertips. So I don't work there. Wouldn't want to work there right now because of all the chicanery going on. Hopefully, it gets switched quickly. Uh, not the best, not the best week, but, uh, you know, I don't work there and what's going on, so I'm not going to sit here and get on my high horse and go, rah, 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 rah. I'm not going to do that. It's just, it's not right. I'm not smart enough to do any of that stuff, so I'm not going to sit here and bash people. Uh, hopefully it gets worked out soon. We'll be right back with more IHWE Radio. This is IHWE champion, Matt Riviera. And when I listen to a podcast, the only podcast that I listen to is IHWE Radio. The legends of Mid-South are back. The Mid-South Legends Fan Fest takes place Friday, April 4th in Shaman, Louisiana at Seeker Center. Cowboy Bill Watt, Jim Cornette, and the Midnight Express. Mr. Wrestling 2, the Rock and Roll Express, and many more are slated for this once-in-a-lifetime event. You'll also see live wrestling featuring the JYD Memorial Cup, Mickey James versus Angelina Love, and a host of others. Get your tickets now. For more info, go to MidSouthLegends.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have an interview tonight with General Skandar Akbar that I conducted in 2010. Excuse me, 2008, not 2010. 2010 popped up on my computer. That's why I said that. I apologize. 2008, that interview will be coming up a little later on. And at this time, it looks like we have a caller on. Uh, Michael, this is your guest. He's your partner. I'm going to let you handle this one. Or I'm going to let you bring on Joe. Uh, so go right ahead. Oh, well, thank you, David. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to IHWE Radio my partner on the show for March 22nd, once again, here in Eureka, California, Redwood Acres Fairgrounds, bell time 7 p.m., doors open 6 p.m. Let me throw all that information in there real quick. This man is a 16-year veteran ring announcer and commentator in the Pacific Northwest area as well as other areas on the north west coast. I almost said north coast, I'm a little local here. He has also he has worked for West Coast Wrestling Connection out of Oregon. He has worked for Blue Collar Wrestling out of Oregon. He has worked for Big Time Wrestling out of Hayward, I believe it is, or Newark. We will get that straightened out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to IHWE Radio, Joe Souza. Joe, how are you doing tonight? 
I am doing well tonight. How are you? And thanks for having me on. I'd like to say my pleasure, but I think the pleasure might be yours to be on our show. Just kidding. Um, anyways, David, if you could take the honors on this, because I feel a little weird talking about myself and talking about someone I know so well, maybe you can kind of handle a little bit of the interview. Maybe you've got a couple questions you might be able to ask us, and we'll kind of roll from there. It's the only time in history that Michael doesn't want to talk about himself. I want everybody to mark this date down. February 26, 2014. You will never, ever, ever hear that again. So I have that tattooed on my ankle right now. There you go. Joe knows what's up. He's been working with Michael for a long time. So first of all, Joe, you have my you have my sympathies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got Joe Sousa on the line. Joe uh, welcome to the show. I am pulling up my notes here. I try to uh, I try to research everybody that's coming on. Uh, you and uh, Michael are going to be doing something spectacular in Eureka, California, uh, next month. Uh, but welcome to IHW Radio. Uh, Joe is a 16-year veteran ring announcer and commentator in the Pacific Northwest and down the West Coast. Uh, a lot of history in the Pacific Northwest Territory, so... Uh, the obvious question is, Is uh, when did you break in, uh, how did you break in, and who did you break in under? Well, when I first started about 17 years ago, what I would do is I would take a camcorder and film the matches at ringside for the wrestlers themselves, uh, mainly Big Time wrestle, big time Wrestling, which is Kirk White's promotion out of Newark, California, down in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I would just videotape for the guys because this way at this time they were auditioning for WCW and WWF, WWE now, and Japan and Mexico and so forth. Well, about a year after that, I was having dinner with Gigolo Steve Rosano and Jason Stiles, and they asked me if I thought about doing play-by-play commentating. And I kind of looked at them a little funny. I went, no, I never really thought about that. And they said, well, you know, because you have a camcorder, you can actually talk into the camera. We can transfer the footage to VHS at the time and so forth. And then I mentioned my voice. You know, no one's going to want to listen to what I'm saying. But when Styles and Rosano made the comment, Joe, it's not what they're listening to, it's what they're hearing, so the light bulb just kicked on. And, and being that said, for the next couple of months, what I would do is I would put a tape on on the TV, turn the audio down, and talk at the TV, do a, a, a call a match. And I borrowed quite a bit from people. I borrowed from Frank Bonema and Don Koss of Portland Wrestling, Walt Harris and Hank Renner of Big Time Wrestling, and you throw a little bit of me, and there you go. So I've started with Big Time Wrestling, and... Did a little bit of all pro wrestling, then Pro Wrestling Iron, Michael Modest's group. I did a couple of shows with them. And most recently, over the past, I'd say, 10 years, Portland Wrestling, the Frank Colbertson version, West Coast Wrestling Connection, Power Pit Pro Wrestling, and Blue Collar. I've, a, a little bit of each promotion and just living the dream. I'm having such a great time with this. And I've also done some ring announcing, so that's on to the resume as well. And uh, the first time I got to ring announce was just quite the experience. It was an NWA world title match with Scrap Iron Adam Pierce defending the title against Aaron Bolo up in Portland at the Cleaver Omri, and uh, qu- quite the honor. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's just been fantastic. All right. Well, that's uh. That's quite the uh that's quite the beginner's point. Very interesting how you uh you started uh a lot of people over the years have kind of started out that way. Uh just doing uh odd jobs, you know, not breaking in right away to be a wrestler or promoter. Uh you obviously had a love and passion for the business and uh so that kind of uh was a gateway to you breaking in. And that's really cool. That's awesome, especially in, in that territory. Me and you kind of go around go along the same lines because I kind of I broke in around the same time as uh, 16 years ago uh so that's awesome okay well uh okay so tell us what is going on or a little bit about what's going on March 22nd in Eureka California I know there's a big show going on a lot of big matches 
Uh, so tell us about that. Uh, Michael, uh, you and Joe both. Uh, Joe, start off with you. Uh, you know, Tell the fans what you're most looking forward to, and then Michael, you as well. Well, it's a excuse me. It's a dream come true, uh, you know, doing play by play and ring announcing and uh, promoting. Uh, I actually, you know, uh, did the posters 12 years ago for Big Time Wrestling when they came up here to Eureka, and so I've done everything else except actual promote. And like I say, it's just a dream come true, and it's something that I've always wanted to do in our hometown. Uh, you know, because Eureka is a hot spot for pro wrestling. Back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, uh, Eureka would be a stop on the old wrestling circuit out of San Francisco. Uh, there would be no surprise that you would see Patterson, Stevens, Gomez, Shibuya, Andre the Giant at the Eureka Municipal Auditorium. And what Mike and myself were trying to do is we're trying to bring that flavor back, you know, old school professional wrestling, uh, affordable this way people can come in, enjoy it, have a good time, and it's on a local level. Uh, being that, you know, we're the local boys promoting, it's not a group coming in and taking off. It does leave a little bit of a sour taste on some of the community because this area is always community first. And so when we emphasize it's a local thing, the fans just clamor for it. They're just looking forward to it. I think it's going to do well. There's been a whole bunch of buzz about it, even up until we started putting up the posters. And now, you know, with TV and radio and the like, it's a dream come true. Uh, I've got family and friends, you know, well well wishing us. There's people that will not touch pro wrestling with a 10-yard stick at my shoot job, but they're going to come just to see what we do. And to me, that that's a compliment, that they're willing to give it a chance and I hope it knocks their socks off. I really do. Well, I can definitely add to all that, uh, David, that Joe and I have a amazing lineup set up for this show. We have stars from DOA Pro Wrestling coming down, as well as a couple other groups up in Oregon. They're going to be coming down and joining us. We've got one gentleman from your neck of the woods, might be actually your state, we have Jason Sullivan, who is with uh, Texas All-Star Wrestling. I believe he will be on our card that night. We've also got Gentleman George Michael will be on the show. Ethan HD and Mike Santiago will be joining us that night. Uh, we have a title match that was just signed will be on the show. But it's our main event. That's the, uh, the It's what I'm looking forward to. The whole card is great, but it's the main event that I think is what's going to get some people's attention a little here. We have a no-rules street fight between the devil himself, Derek Drexel, and HBQ Quiz. These men have had a feud up and down the West Coast and the Pacific Northwest. They have fought back and forth, trading one victory after another back and forth. They have had some brutal matches, and on March 22nd, they will be in the main event, one more time, as I said, no rule street fight. It's going to be a one hell of a match. It's funny that you mentioned that. Uh, I've heard Why a lot that? about this. this. I've heard a lot about this match uh, more than most everything else on the card, and that's not a knock at anybody, but this match I've actually read about in several different forms online. So I have a surprise for you. I kind of went out of my way and kind of went over your head. And I arranged for a special guest to be on here. And I have arranged for the devil himself, a guy who used to run around with Kevin Sullivan in the Army of Darkness in Florida. And the guy that was, I remember, the original uh, Lamonte in uh, wrestling in the Pacific Northwest, the devil himself, Derek Drexel, is on the line. Derek, are you there? (laughs) <laughs> you know, I was told a long time ago that the thoughts that go through my head really aren't okay for mass consumption from the people. So when I get a phone call from two guys 
whose dream's about to come true because all of a sudden they've gotten into the wrestling business. You know, they're they're now wrestling promoters, and they're willing to pay me to go out there and permanently injure someone. <laughs> it sounds like a good freaking day for the devil to do what the devil does, <laughs> and that's the devil's work. <laughs> Uh, go ahead. Uh, are you there? I, I, I like this guy. I like this guy. Background real quick on this guy for the fans who've been living in a cave for the last 20 years. As I said, this guy was a member of Kevin Sullivan's Army of Darkness in Florida. That I'm still a member. Like Kevin there. never kicked me out. Daddy said that I can be part of the Army of Darkness anytime I want. Well, there you go. So he's still the Army of Darkness. He's an army by himself. He's, the, he's, he's held the FOW, Future Wrestling Junior Heavyweight Championship in Florida. And he's also held the tag team titles with Quiz, the man you will be fighting on March 22nd. So this is what Michael told me. This is what Michael told me, uh, Derek. I, I like you. I like what you say. But this is what Michael told me. This is the jaded side of history that he gave me. And I want to get your thoughts on it. He told me that you went, you moved to Florida, and when you came back, you cost Quiz the DOA title, and then you caused him to be put on the shelf with back surgery. He comes back, wins the title, you jump him again, and y'all been going back and forth. Now you're going to have a no-rule street fight next month. Is that what really happened, or is that just Michael's jaded side of the story? See, at one point, up in the Pacific Northwest, people were actually cheering me. For some reason, they decided that they liked me. They liked my attitude. They liked the fact that I really just didn't care. And I, I was working a feud with a guy named Jeremy Blanchard, who actually I think is going to be on the show also. But we had a loser leaves towel match. And whoever lost had to leave Pacific Northwest, not just DOA, but all the companies for a minimum of six months. Well, at this point, me and Chris, we, we were like brothers. We were family. We were tag team, former tag team champions. Well, that night, when I went there to face Jeremy, it wasn't just Jeremy I was facing. I was facing his brother Bubba on the outside. But where was my brother? Where was Quiz? He was hanging back in the locker room with the rest of the boys, having a good time. And when I couldn't beat those two men, and I was sent packing from the Pacific Northwest, you know, it, it kind of irked me a little bit. It, it hurt inside because this man I thought was family. So I go down to Florida to well, what else are you going to do? I decided to go down, and I went to SCW, the former minor league for the WWE, and I got involved with SCW. And when I went down there, I noticed that these guys that I call brothers in the Pacific Northwest, all of a sudden they weren't in my life anymore. Quinn wasn't in my life anymore. He didn't give two shits about what I was doing. He didn't give two shits about that. I was trying to make a bigger name and then bring it back to the Pacific Northwest. So after my six months of exile, after as close to a year, I was gone. And I came back, and when I came back, I see that Quinn, the guy who basically just stabbed me in the back, is now the DOA champion, the heavyweight champion, a belt I never even got a chance to wrestle for, even though I've been there since day one for that company. So I did what any person that with a right mind would do. I took what he loved away from him. I had what I loved. I loved the Pacific Northwest. I loved DOA, and it was taken from me. So when Chris loved that belt more than anything, the best thing I could do was take it away from him. And I I didn't mean to put him out for eight months with back surgery. I, I really didn't mean to. But when you drop a guy straight on his head, <laughs> bad things happen. <laughs> uh, uh, next question. I, I understand that completely. Real quick, and I dig it. What does the county, Humboldt County, what can they expect when the devil rolls into town on March 22nd? Like I said, Joe and Mike, 
They they want to be big shots now. They want to run the biggest pro wrestling event that came to Humboldt County in, in 10 years. So they hire me <laughs> to go out there with no rules, to go out there and do whatever I want. <laughs> so what people need to expect is full on brutality. <laughs> so me and Quiz, after like three, four years now, we've been beating the hell out of each other. We kind of like it. <laughs> I I have a strong love affair with barbed wire. It's kind of a love hate thing because I do love to bring barbed wire out to the ring. I don't always love it the next day when I'm cut head to toe and I'm still seeping out my bandages. But I love barbed wire, so I guarantee there will be barbed wire. There will be kendo sticks. There will be chairs crushing people's skulls. And Joe and Mike are going to end up with a great big bill for the destruction that we do to that building. <laughs> so Joe, Mike, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to come hurt Chris. <laughs> and I, I want you guys to be the big stars in your hometown. I want you to feel so important that you would put yourself on the poster. <laughs> I want you guys to succeed until after the show when you're stuck cleaning up the mess that I'm going to leave all over Humboldt County <laughs> and make sure there's an ambulance available because someone is going to need it, guaranteed. <laughs> well, Derek, um, i got to thank David for this wonderful surprise. David, you do not understand what you have done by bringing the devil on here tonight. Unfortunately, I will take some responsibility along with Joe. We did ask the devil to come down for one night, but I want the devil to understand we are the The devil went down to California because he was looking for quiz so he could freeze him and carve him up like a little hot dog. (laughs) Wow, what a heck of a match that's going to be. (laughs) <laughs> I got oh, a kiddie pool <laughs> I got a kiddie pool filled with barbed wire I'm going to bring my kiddie pool full of barbed wire And we're going to see what the county of Humboldt really thinks of that Maybe I'll bring a slip and slide too filled with broken glass This is the I'm doing <laughs> Joe, I know you're on the line, man uh, um, Come I'm on, Joe, come and take okay. that. Tell, tell everyone what I'm going to do to quiz. I mean, you're the one that signed his death warrant. Joe, tell everybody what I'm going to do to quiz. Well, instead of telling everybody what you're going to do to him, <laughs> what I'll say is this, <laughs> you have to come out to, to the building. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? After I'm done hurting Quiz, I'm going to have a party. <laughs> and you know uh, what? You guys are going to invite it. <laughs> it's a party all for me because I'm going to be victorious. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens March 22nd, and I want to let you know so much now. Derek, you're coming to Humboldt County March 22nd, but right now this is my show. <laughs> Your show, my show If I didn't want to take over the show I wouldn't be here I could sit here and talk For the next two hours And make this the devil's hour Speaking about whatever the hell I want But instead <laughs> I'm going to go play With a razor blade I will see you people on the 22nd <laughs> And if you bring your kids Make sure And bring some little Some little eye patches So they don't see the brutality Because Quiz is going to bleed And Humboldt County Is going to burn In a big cloud of smoke <laughs> Bye bye Wow. Um, thanks for the surprise, David. Um, yeah, I, I got nothing. Um, yeah, I need to jump into that, too. Uh, yeah, what, 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 
What would Jim Rome say right, right now? Thanks for nothing. I'm I'm flabbergasted, and right now I'm already checking receipts to see if we can afford the possible the possible medical bill that could happen following this main event, Mike. March 22nd, we'll, hopefully the building will still be standing at the end of this night. I think we might have made an error bringing the devil to Humboldt County, but we're going to find out. you got to be there for this Saturday night, March 22nd, Redwood Acres Fairgrounds, Eureka. We'll be right back with more IHWE Radio. For the first time ever, the Mid-South Legends Fan Fest will take place Friday, April 4th in Charlotte, Louisiana at the Seeger Center. Don't miss Q&A with the founder of Mid-South Wrestling, Cowboy Bill Watts. With Jim Cornette. A Cajun dinner with the stars. Photo ops with legends like the Midnight Express. Mr. Wrestling 2. Mr. Olympia. Kamala. And more. Oh, but there's more. In the evening, the Battle Lines Live Wrestling event will feature a JYD Memorial Cup Battle Royale honoring the Late Junkyard Dog. Plus the Rock and Roll Express. Bill Dundee. Tommy Dreamer. The Pope. Elijah Bird. The Masterpiece. Chris Adonis. Will all be in action. Plus Dark Journey returns to manage the Empire in a six-man tag team match. And Mickey James will take on Angelina Love in the squared circle. Make your plans now to attend this once-in-a-lifetime event Friday, April 4th at the Seeger Center in Charlotte. For more information, go to MidSouthLegends.com. Be a part of Mid-South history today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Joe Sousa, and uh, I want to thank Derek Drexel, the devil himself, for coming on. And, uh, Michael, I've been around this business for a long time, as long as Joe, maybe as long as Derek. I don't think, I think Derek's been around a little bit longer than me. But I know how to sell tickets, and I did you a favor while you're worried and you're sitting there biting your nails, and you're like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. That is what we call talking people into the building. And that's exactly what happened. People are going to come see what's going to happen. This needs to be settled. These guys have been going back and forth for a long time. What's that old saying? Good friends make better enemies. So, folks, if you're anywhere around Eureka, California, Joe Sousa on Facebook. Uh, In fact, as soon as this show is over with, go to facebook.com backslash I-H-W-E pro wrestling. Michael, get a flyer on the I-H-W-E page, and it'll be there. And if you're anywhere in that area, make sure you're there. So, Michael, I did you a favor. You can thank me later. It's going to be all good. Just have the EMT standing by. Because it sounds like you're going to need it. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm a little, I'm a little concerned. I definitely think Derek's going to put some uh, people in the seats. I also think he might put somebody in jail. I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but we'll find out on March 22nd. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's going to take place in Eureka, California, on March 22nd. At 9 o'clock, we will welcome Fred Urban from Old School Wrestling. But at this time, we would like to take you back to Labor Day of 2008. I had the honor and privilege of speaking with the legendary, late, great general of Devastation Incorporated. He's the Texas Wrestling Hall of Famer. Devastation Incorporated will be honored on March 15th at the 2014 IHWE Texas Wrestling Hall of Fame ceremony. Skandar Akbar was a friend of mine. He was a mentor, and he joined us for this interview on a podcast, a podcast called Scars Radio. So at this time, we're going to take you back and listen to this interview. It's about 15 minutes long, and as soon as that's over with, we'll come right back with more live IHCB radio. Until then, uh, we're going to hand it over to this uh, archived interview with the General Skandar Akbar. Enjoy it, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, on the line right now, calling in here right now is undoubtedly it probably the greatest manager in professional wrestling history and a legend in this area and all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the General Skandar Akbar. Good evening, sir. Yeah, it's good to be on with you. I want the fans to know right now that Akbar is still going strong. 
make no mistake about it, Devastation Incorporated is still number one. And you know what? All the rest of the guys that uh, were around, was around the general and started with me, much of them have gone down the tube. That's sad. But you know, the thing about it is, you just keep going and going, and I'm always searching for talent. I still get a lot of cards and telegrams from all across the world saying, do for me what you did for Kamala, the one-man gang, the missing link, the masked medics. Yeah, the list goes on and on and on. Well, Akbar, uh, David Fuller, welcome you to Scars Radio. It is an honor to be on the line with you. Uh, Akbar, for, I grew up on you for many years, and, and, and it goes without saying, you are, in my eyes, the greatest manager of all time. Uh, but that era, that world-class championship wrestling era, uh, we've heard the stories on the DVDs, but uh, I never get tired of hearing it. Uh, what was it like in that era when the, the Sportorium was selling out every Friday night, and you guys were known internationally? Yes, it, it indeed. Uh, it was at the point at that time that uh, everything was so hot around here that, that you could put just virtually any card in there as long as you had uh, the staples. What I mean is uh, myself, like uh, the Dragons, and then the uh, Von Erichs, I always call them the Dragon Slayers, and, and uh, the Free Birds, of course. It was a tremendous package. If you look at those matches and that time, uh, it was a package from the first match even down to the opening matches. And, uh, you know, as far as my career, you know, I wrestled for a long time and also had, uh, uh, you know, I was a North American champion, Australian. I was in 19 countries. But, you know, some of my fondest memories is uh, uh, outside that ring and guiding these guys to uh, to glory. And, and uh, indeed, world class was one of the tapes of the decades. And also, I, at that time, I was affiliated with Mid-South, which was also a very tremendous organization. Indeed. Uh, Bill Watts ran a great organization in uh, the Mid-South days. And uh, when, when people think of great wrestling, great, just great wrestling, they think of uh, Bill Watts' uh, Universal Wrestling Federation, a.k.a. Mid-South, and they also think about world-class championship wrestling. Uh, I well, as for myself, yeah, I'm still on the go as far as uh, uh, I make a lot of appearances. I've made some legend signings. I've made some legend appearances. And, and uh, of course, you know, uh, <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. He's still there. You know, it's, it's like I went down to Louisiana not long ago, and, my gosh, it's like I'd never left. And people remember things. Incidentally, I was on a show uh, similar to yours not long ago calling in and but they had the fans call in and ask questions. And, uh, uh, of course, you know, they remember the things I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's the way it is. Because, you see, these TVs were so strong. And what we had in, uh, in, in the storylines and what it, it, it was just, it was so infectious to the people. It was like, uh, I've heard of old people going to bed at 9 o'clock and setting the alarm at 10 to watch this uh, two hours on Saturday night over here in uh, the Dallas area in Fort Worth. And also, uh, you know, early in the morning, everybody set their alarm clocks to watch Channel 39. So, <laughs> and the same thing applies for uh, uh, the Mid-South uh, uh, places that uh, our television were. You know, one of the fondest memories I have, Akbar, was in uh, the late 80s. Uh, my first wrestling event going to it live, how I fell in love with this business, was I went to Wool Rogers Memorial Coliseum in 1989. And right. I saw gorgeous Gary Young and Cactus Jack Manson, managed by you and Devastation Incorporated. Mm -hmm. Y'all took on Eric Embry and Percy Pringle in a scaffold match with Frank Dusick as the referee. That's right. I remember that. Incidentally, that time, uh, you know, as the uh, sportatorium, as time had gone by with us, uh, this was the last of the Sportatorium glory days. Uh, you know, there was so much uh, that we had to do at that point in time because what do you do for an encore uh, like 82, 83, 84, which was so tremendous in there. But you know something we did, and I, and I took guys like Gary Young, unfortunately never got a break in this business, and we put all kinds of good heat on people like that. And, and uh, uh, yes, I remember the scaffold match, and, of course, uh, uh, do you remember the loser leave town uh, at the Sportatorium? 
Yeah. And but they didn't work. They hey, it, it backfired on uh, uh, Eric Embry and all of his associates because I had Gary Young and Cactus Jack, uh, Mick under the uh, under the uh, ring, <laughs> and then they made the appearance as uh, the main event went on, and it was uh, uh, it was something that people still remember. Yes, that was the steel cage match, correct? That certainly was, and uh, uh, you know, as far as Eric Embry, uh, you know, everybody said, "Well, uh, how you, how's this guy going to do anything?" I mean, because you know, he was he was a he was a pretty well he was a pretty well hated heel around here. He was mm-hmm. he was bad news, but you know, we did it, and and uh, Eric Embry started receiving as much mail as the boys did. It just goes to show you, you know, wrestling fans are the most unique in the world, but, you know, they're very, very faithful. They, they don't like me a lot, but I'll tell you what, I got I have to hand it to them. They're very, very staunch. Uh, you know, they're always there. You know, if, if we, if the Sportatorium was still standing and say, hey, let's go uh, run a show, no advertisement, just very little – You'll you'd probably have 250, 300 just diehard fans uh, show up there. That's true. That's true. I have to ask you about this, if you don't mind, Akbar. About three months ago, you were uh, featured in a DVD uh, world class reunion question and answer. It was you, Wild Bill Irwin, and Gary Hart. Yes. Gary Hart passed away the next day when he arrived back in Dallas. Yes, we did. Uh huh. How was? How was I saw the Q and A. I loved it. How was the Q and A? And just uh, what were your thoughts as soon as you came back home and heard that news? If you don't mind me asking. Well, it, it uh, actually uh, uh, it worked out very, very well up there, and uh, those people were very, very nice, and we had a tremendous turnout. And uh, the questions and answers were great, and uh, like I say, those guys, those vendors up there, really, they really treated us very well, and. Uh, you know, Gary and I. Gary, I rem- I had known Gary since 1966, mm-hmm. and uh, although he lived, you know, in the mid cities, uh, you know, it's so busy around here sometimes. And I had really didn't have time, or probably time to see him. And uh, uh, you know, we 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 said, well, uh, let's start seeing more of each other. And and, uh, and uh, coming back on that plane, it was so eerie. Uh, Gary was in such a, ga- a, a tremendous mood, and we talked about the people that were dying in this business. This is, and, and, and this is really, this is the irony of this whole thing. And he said, well, you know, my boys, he has two good boys. And he yeah. said, I don't want them to go through all that. He's, I don't want any publicity, and I want to be cremated. Now, he's telling me on the plane. So we get there, the boys pick him up. I hadn't seen uh, the boys in a while. And my ride came along, and all of a sudden, about the next day, about eight or nine hours, uh, I got a call, and it was disbelief. I couldn't believe it. He was feeling so good, so it was very, very eerie to me. And uh, uh, at least the last days, uh, Gary got out of the house and made an appearance and everything. And you know, wrestling uh, it, people like he and I, and and uh, you know, there's a long list of. Uh, uh, we 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 think that we that wrestling is our life. Right. Wrestling will always be our life. Right. And uh, you know, it, and I've had a lot of people say, well, there's no commonology in what they do now and what we did. Well, that may be true to an extent, but it's still wrestling. Right. Of course, I like it. I like it the way it was. Sure. And uh, I have a lot of people that recognize me. And they'll come up to me and they'll ask me when it's going to go back <laughs> like it used to be. There may be one out of 30 that would ask me about, you know, the East Coast up there. Yes. But make no mistake about it, uh, a lot of those guys cut their teeth with me. Yes. Mark Calloway is a very good personal friend of mine. Mick yes, Foley, uh, Steve Williams, Steve Austin. Right. Uh uh, you know, and Bradshaw's my boy too, and and uh, yeah, right. and uh, you know it it uh, and I love to keep up with them. Unfortunately, uh, you know, I don't know when they come on. They come on, and I and I'll look, and 
uh, I won't be able to find them on the tube, so other things are going on and what just doesn't interest me. But uh, I will say this, uh, I love each one, each and every one of those guys, and uh, I'm so happy that they're doing all right. And you have to, you have to keep this in mind. They're getting a paycheck, and whether or not their talent is utilized, in the right direction, uh, you know that's that's just uh, something that uh, people have to live with today, because uh, you know it's a different era, different time, and the promotion uh, feels that this is the way they want it. Exactly. I think uh, a lot of people ask me. Uh, a lot of people ask me. They say, uh, you know, here I've been in this business going on ten years, and they ask me. They say, David, out of uh, out of the uh, the veterans that were stars down here that haven't uh who would you uh who could go up to the wwe right now and not lose a step and draw money and draw heat and i tell them akbar oh well bless your heart akbar. well thank you very much uh, uh david you know i had feelers to go sure. uh uh many times right. but uh it wasn't the right situation at that time uh they wanted to kind of dissect my character so to speak and, uh, you know, make a godfather-like image out of me. But, uh, you know, I just wasn't uh, wasn't totally satisfied. And, uh, you know, I know there's uh, – everybody still likes to make money. Sure. Even if you're if you're 91 years old, you love to see money in your hands. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're nowhere near 91. No, right? no, no, no. Here. I'm very well preserved, I'll tell you that. But uh, I, I was told the other day you're approaching 30. Is that true? Yeah, you could say that. Maybe 39. <laughs> well, let's get to what's going on in September. Well, there's what I keep hearing, Akbar. You know, I'm close to the office here at IHW, and, and I keep hearing these rumors. IHW offices and you have been talking. So what's going on? You know more than me. Are, is Akbar coming to IHW? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, wow. I've made the deal, and, uh, uh, you know, this is a uh, this is a conversation that... Uh, People will enjoy, but uh, you put this in the back of your uh, everybody's mind right now. Uh, hey, R E S P E C T. That's the whole thing with Akbar. Pay me with that respect, and I will be there on. I believe it is September the thirteenth. Yes. So you're going to be. So there yeah, Dennis Station's going to bring some people in, and I understand. I correct me if I'm wrong. That uh, Bill Mercer will be there. Yes, he will. And be an on. appearance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, wow. So, so, uh, oh my goodness, this is earth-shattering news. So, uh, you're telling me at the same time in the same building for the first time in what 20 years it's going to be the general and oh, Bill Mercer? At least. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, at my least. Goodness gracious, ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen. And Akbar. I'll be watching carefully. Wow. I'll watch that man carefully because if he wants to interview me, then uh, yeah, the one thing that Bill Mercer always did. Uh, he was kind of like the arbitrator between uh, you know, uh, the two opponents. Instead of trying to get himself over, Bill Mercer uh, was really a, a credit to this business. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to you fans. Uh, and remember this, uh, Akbar still got it, and you'll see it. Wow. So, ladies and gentlemen, September 13th, a major announcement. The General Skandar Akbar has apparently signed on with IHW Entertainment, and he will be there live on Saturday, September 13th. And, and Akbar, you always come with an A, B, and C plan. That's so, right. Um, well, I've, you know, that's uh, uh, I'm not going to disclose that right now. That's true. That's true. Well, Akbar, uh, wow, you have just shattered the earth here at IHW. That's awesome. I can't wait. September 13th just got bigger. Uh, Akbar, is there anything you want to plug while you're here on the air? Is there anything you want to promote or? Oh, not necessarily. No, no. Okay. That's that's quite all right. But uh, uh, in, uh, we'll we'll just look for that date. Saturday, September 13th, the General Skandar Akbar will be there. Akbar, thank you so much for joining us and taking the time out of your Labor Day weekend. I hope it's a good one for you. Thank you. Take care, Akbar. Thank you. Bye bye.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was an interview I conducted with the General Skandar Akbar back in 2008. IWE had planned on having their return to one night only show on September 13th. However, our venue became a shelter for the victims of a hurricane that was approaching New Orleans. I believe it was Hurricane Ike. And uh, so that date got pushed back to October 4th. What was good about that was, is usually any time that a date is pushed back or postponed, it's usually bad news, especially when you've got all the advertising and stuff done and it's a month away. Uh, in this case, it turned out to be a good thing for us because Mark Lawrence wanted to be there along with Bill Mercer and Skandar Akbar and uh, – when we announced that uh when we announced that the show had been postponed, Mark Lawrence was able to make himself available for October fourth. So it was really cool and you can see that you can you can see that infer- you can see that uh that moment on the IHWE YouTube page, which is at IHWE uh, two, two zero zero nine. Uh, we'll be right back with more IHWE Radio. This is IHWE Champion Matt Riviera, and I want to see you June the eighth at the Sendura Center in Fort Worth. Yeah, Fair the legends of Mid South are back. The Mid South Legends Fan Fest takes place Friday, April fourth, in Shawmut, Louisiana, at Seeger Center. Cowboy Bill Watt, Jim Cornette, and the Midnight Express. Mr. Wrestling Two, the Rock and Roll Express, and many more are slated for this once in a lifetime event. You'll also see live wrestling featuring the JYD Memorial Cup, Mickey James versus Angelina Love, and a host of others. Get your tickets now. For more info, go to MidSouthLegends.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with IHWE Radio. Michael, are you still there? I'm right here. General Skandar Akbar, brother, what did you think? Um, Being a world-class fan, I always liked Devastation Incorporated. was a huge fan of General Skandar Akbar. And to be able to sit and just listen to an interview, it was 2008, you said? Yeah. Two years back? Okay. To yeah. be able to listen to that, to hear Skandar Akbar one more time, it had my attention. That was an amazing interview. <clears throat> Excuse me. And like I said, Akbar had such a presence in and out of the ring, and you could feel that presence right there in that interview. I mean, that, that was amazing. Uh, I really enjoyed hearing that. Well, thank you, Michael. I enjoyed doing it. Skander Akbar was a friend of mine. He was a mentor. It was sad when he passed away in 2010. He was honored the very next year at the Texas Wrestling Hall of Fame ceremony. Uh, his family, Joe up from Wichita Falls, and I am proud to announce that once again his family will be in attendance on March 15th when Devastation Incorporated is honored. I do know Gorgeous Gary Young, Spoiler 2000, The Prince Alfarat, Black Bart, Kiko Torres, will all be there, former members of Devastation Incorporated at one time or another. They were all in different eras of Devastation Incorporated. They're all going to be there to talk about what it was like being a part of that legendary stable. And it's going to be a very special day. On the line right now, we have representatives of old school wrestling down here in Texas. they got a big program lined up coming up on Saturday, March 1st. Uh, Fred Urban, Fred, you're on the line, and I believe you have Jaspin Taylor on the line as well. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Fred, Jaspin, welcome to HWE Radio. Uh, thank you for joining us, Fred. Uh, tell us a little bit about OSW uh, as an organization, when it started, how it came about. Tell us about the history of OSW wrestling. OSW started <laughs> kind of as a a dream per se because of Dusty Wolf. Uh, back in the day when Ken Timms was still alive, um, Ken's wife Juanita ran a public forum that we all used to go on called Old School Wrestling. Well, um, James Baird and Dusty Wolf and a lot of the the older guys used to post on it, and it's kind of like kayfabe commentaries. It was a lot of fun. And uh, Ken passed away of a um, heart condition a few years ago, several years ago, and. Um, I always told Dusty if I was ever to start a promotion, I would do it and call it old school wrestling as a tribute to them. And, you know, Dusty was my mentor and my brother, and I really look up to him, and he really gave me a lot of opportunities that I kind of got anywhere else. 
So um, I never thought about being a promoter or starting a school or, or anything like that. And uh, in 2010, my daughter was in athletics at her school, and uh, she had some injuries, and she couldn't rehab them properly because there wasn't the correct equipment available. And they were having to share the weight equipment with um, with the boys' athletics, and she wouldn't have the allotted time she needed to actually rehab her injury. And we had tried different fundraisers and stuff like that within the booster club to uh, buy the equipment that the girls' athletics needed. And one night when she was in excruciating pain, she was crying to me, said, Dad, can't you do a wrestling show? Can you call somebody? Can you make it happen? It, it'll raise money. Well, four years later, the rest is history, and that's all we do is uh, charitable causes or fundraisers. We're actually a non-profit organization now. So, uh, you know what? became a, to help out my kid actually became an organization to help out everybody within the community. Wow. Yeah, OSW uh is one is one of those companies that that uh is really a, a shining star for Texas. They've done so many good things, like Fred says, you know, they're only they're only you know, they all all they want to do is help people and they don't put on wrestling shows for the wrong reasons. They don't put on wrestling shows just so they can go out and play Weekend Warrior, a hobby. They don't put on wrestling shows just to put themselves on flyers and have something to do. They put on wrestling shows for good causes, and it's real admirable. I've known Fred for a few years now. He is a really good guy. He was trained by one of the absolute best, uh, Dusty Wolf, who is being honored into the Texas Wrestling Hall of Fame ceremony next month. Fred is actually going to be the one inducting him. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's really, really cool. Uh, Jasmine, you're on the line. You're representing OSW. Uh, how did you break into the business, and uh, when did you break in? Tell us a little bit about your background. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, I mean, for me, Fred and I met um, a few years after I had been involved in the business a little bit. Um, really, um, wrestling is something that I've always I've always loved growing up as a kid. You know, this the cliche story. I was the kid cheering for Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior growing up and just always had a fascination with these people. You know, they were superheroes. They seemed to have these superhuman abilities and they could do these amazing things. And so they always just fascinated me as people. They just seemed like these titans, these just unreachable heroes and these people that you just wanted to meet them, you wanted to be around them, and you just were in awe of the things they could do, the things the beating they could, they could come back from. And really, that fascination with wrestling is where everything started for me. But, you know, growing up, uh, wrestling wasn't supposed to be in the cards for me. I was actually going to college, going to school to be a lawyer. I was pursuing that, but and wrestling was kind of this distant dream. Um, however, I met a friend um, while I was in college. I was at a summer job, and we just struck up a conversation, and we started talking about wrestling. And uh, the next thing I knew, me and him were we, we were going out to shows, and we actually wound up going to an NWA Top of Texas show in Amarillo. And the promoter saw me, and he said, "Hey, man, you know you got pretty good size, you got a pretty good look. Have you ever considered?" training for wrestling and I said man I've, you know I've always wanted to but it's never been in my cards I grew up in Midland Texas there was never anything like that there in that area in Permian Basin and he said well man why don't you come back why don't you come back and uh you, you know he and his name is Jack Logan he did me a service he took me and my friends we got in the ring and he showed us some basics and he was amazed with me. He said I had some natural ability. I was able to kind of do some things on the first and second try. He said, you need to come back. And basically the, the, the rest was history. I started training in Amarillo, Texas, and I met Fred about two years later. He told me about his vision and what he was trying to do for his daughter and this vision that he had of helping the community through wrestling. And it just seemed like a great opportunity. It seemed like a he seemed like a genuine person, a sincere person, and I, I didn't feel like he was trying to trying to take advantage of me or trying to tell me something that wasn't true. And from then on, we had this partnership. I helped train guys at the school, and we work on events 
together and things like that. And Fred does the business side and does the negotiating, and it's worked ever since. We've had some great success here in OSW and want to continue to have success. Very cool. Very cool. That's a great story. I've heard nothing but good things about you, Justin. So I'm looking forward to meeting you here soon, uh, hopefully next month. So this coming Saturday, there's a big OSW event. Ladies and gentlemen, OSW, when they put on an event, it's, it's big. They they bring in superstars from all over the country. They bring in superstars that wrestling fans will know, different television shows. Uh, they have a real good roster. They have a real good alumni. They brought in some, some great names, and uh, they have a very good relationship with these people. Uh, I've never heard anything bad about an OSW show. And that's really good, especially down here in Texas, where they're, they're, the state is full of politics. Uh, so, Fred, this coming weekend is a huge event. It's OSW the Saved by the Bell. Uh, it's all right because you're saying, but okay, I had to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm still, Mr. Belding doesn't show up. You're going to get a really angry email from me. Just kidding. Hi, Mr. Belding. If you're listening, I doubt it. All right, Fred, this weekend, tell us about the OSW Say by the Bell. This is our annual event in Hood Junior High. This is where it all started, our first OSW show. And uh, they've graciously actually given us a home. We're running monthly wrestling shows there and a portion of the ticket sales goes back to the girls' athletic program every month. So this Saturday, March 1st, we have from the legendary Guerrero family, Chavo Guerrero Jr., as well as uh, probably my favorite diva of all time, just because she's a friend and she's a hard worker, uh, we have the beautiful Mickey James in attendance too. And uh, it, like I said, it's all for a good cause. Uh, we've got a stacked card, seven matches. We've got uh, friends from other promotions, from NWA Top Texas and NWA BOW coming in, as well as all of our local and local talent that's been working hard and training to, to really pull this card off. Our very first show there for an indie show, our very first show period, we drew 546 people. Uh, last year, we had Billy Dunn as the WWE employee and uh, Mickey James in attendance, and we had so this year we're hoping and expecting that to have at least 700 more with what we're drawing. So, uh, like I said, it's a good cause, and it goes to the kids. And uh, you can't beat it. It's a, not a family fun filled entertainment. The old school, you know, and that's what we're striving for. And hopefully, you know, we'll do the community right. Well, Justin, uh, who are you going to be stepping inside the squared circle with this coming Saturday night? Who who are you wrestling, and what is your game plan? Uh, I've, I've seen different, you know, pliers. I've seen a couple different ones. Who are you wrestling? Well, who tell me who you're wrestling, and then I'll tell you my. I'll I'll, I'll ask my next question. Who are you wrestling this Saturday night? Well, this Saturday night, I've got a huge task in front of me. I am the current OSW champion at this time, and Chavo Guerrero Jr. will be challenging me for the OSW championship. So, All right, ladies uh, and gentlemen. That is yeah, going to be so a huge match. So, Gaston, you're going to go one-on-one with a member of the legendary Guerrero family, a man who's held the gold in WCW, who's held gold in WWE, who's held gold in TNA, whose uncle was one of the greatest performers of all time. You are going into this situation this Saturday night where you have an opportunity to put yourself on the map, not just in Texas, but eyes from around the world are going to be on you. Because anytime you wrestle somebody with the name of the caliber of Trouble Guerrero, not just the fans that are there, not just people around the state, the whole world is going to be watching the outcome of that match. So how are you preparing? Are you watching tapes? Are you watching footage? And what is your – obviously, your goal is to walk in on Saturday the champion or walk out Saturday the champion. But other than that, what is your mindset and what is your goal this Saturday night knowing you're stepping into the ring with Chavo Guerrero Jr.? Well, I mean, man, where to start? So, basically, yes, you're right. Have I been studying tape? Yes, I have. I've been watching Chavo Guerrero. I've gone back as far as – his time in WCW, where he was um, running around in the cruiserweight division. I went back a little bit to with Rey Mysterio, his battles with several wrestlers in the WWE roster, and I even watched some of his matches 
matches with you know, TNA wrestling. So I've studied him from the time that he first started first was on TV up until the time that he was on TNA wrestling. So I've really been able to piece together Chavo Guerrero's style and see him evolve from the wrestler he was back at WCW in the early 90s to the wrestler that he is now. And to be quite honest, um, when preparing for an opponent like Chavo Guerrero, I mean, there's no way that I'm going to be able to match Chavo skill for skill. I mean, he's has, like you said, he comes from wrestling royalty. His family, his Uncle Eddie, one of the greatest performers of all time, Gory Guerrero, Hector Mondo Guerrero, great innovators of wrestling in Mexico and in the States. So to try to out-wrestle Chavo Guerrero would be foolish. So basically... I'm going to do what I've done for years now under, with my two-year reign as champion. I'm going to – he's going to give me openings. I'm going to take them. When he's open, I'm going to take my opportunity. So he's not looking. I'm going to be looking. When he's, when he's um, when he gives me something, I'm going to take it. And that's what you have to do sometimes. Sometimes you're going to have to take a victory any way you can get it. And that's what I intend to do against Chavo Guerrero. Well, here's my advice to you, Justin, and uh, you obviously don't need my advice, but I'll go ahead and give it to you because I've heard so many good things about you. And you beating Chavo Guerrero would be a huge deal, and it would give Texas a whole lot of momentum. A lot of times when these guys come into these towns and Chavo is hard to the business. I'm not saying Chavo is just going to overlook you, but a lot of times these guys come into these towns and they love the attention that they get. And sometimes the attention kind of takes over. And, you know, they, it's hard for them to take their mind off the attention for a few minutes because sometimes they do underestimate the local talent. They do come in. So Chavo Guerrero may be looking at you, and he may be looking past you, which no competitor should ever do any time you step inside the squirt circle. Anything can happen. So if you, you're going to have a moment on Saturday night where Chavo takes his eyes off the prize, for a few seconds, a momentary second, take your moment then. And like you said, hey, by any means necessary, do what you got to do. I hope that I wake up Sunday morning and I read that you retain the OSW championship against Chavo Guerrero. Again, not that it would be a bad thing that Chavo would be the OSW champion because that would be huge for OSW. But it would be better for the company and for you to retain on Saturday night. So, just remember, sometimes these guys roll into these roll into town. They love the attention that they're getting, and they do take their eyes off the prize. Sometimes for a split second, sometimes for a few seconds, just be on the lookout. When you see that opportunity, if I were you, I would take it. Obviously, you've done well on your own, uh, but that's my only advice to you. Well, thank you, sir. I will take it, and I will take any advantage that he gives me. I will. All right, well, Fred, uh, man, well, that sounds like a big co- – also this Saturday night, I'm hearing it's going to be a, a, a triple threat, a, deep, a, 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 a woman's match. It's going to be Mickey James, who's one of the greatest of all time. She's going to be taking on two Texas girls, Jessica James and Dyslexia. Dyslexia worked for me. So did Jessica James. They both wrestled for me in the past. Uh, that's going to be very interesting. Uh, what do you expect is going to come out of that match? Uh, the hair is going to fly this Saturday night in that match. It's going to be a hell of a cat fight. <laughs> I know Jessica James is a tough competitor. She was trained by Booker T. She trained for a good three or four years. She wrestles in Japan. And from my understanding, she's got a lethal kick that they even named after her in Japan. So I'm 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 really curious to see how Mickey James stands up to her and what the outcome will be. Miss Dyslexia, though, she's been all over the state, it seems, especially in Oklahoma a lot. I know they've gone a few other places across the country, and uh, she's booked everywhere, so she's getting the experience. I know a while back she uh, did a mixed tag match with ODB and Chavo on the show, so she's got some experience, too, under her belt, so we'll just see if, with a three-way can go any direction. But, you know, So I'm really, at this point, going to be a fan and, and actually watch this match just to see what happens and see if Mickey can can overcome both of them and see who the winner is going to be in this, this matchup. 
what's going to what's going to be interesting, what and what's really cool as a fan. Two points I want to make. Number one, Nikki, same thing I would say to Cabo. Don't come in and take your eyes off the prize because either one of these two women, they're both capable of beating you, and they're both looking to make a name for themselves at your expense on Saturday night. Because yeah. anytime you beat Nikki James, that's a big deal. Number two, as a fan, you come to these shows and you see people like Nikki James and Charlo Guerrero in these matches, you never know when the next star you never know when the next star is going to be made. That's what's good about going to these independent shows, ladies and gentlemen, because you know these independent shows like OSW that only has the best in Texas. They have the they have the caliber of talent, the best athletes who want to do this because they love it and they're passionate about it. You never know who you who you never know who you're going to see then and who you're going to see in a few months in Orlando. You just never know. So, all right, Fred. Uh, I want to thank you, Justin, for coming on. How do fans find out about OSW online? Give us the information. Online, you can catch us on Twitter at OSW underscore wrestling, as well as um, OSW Old School Wrestling Incorporated on Facebook. Make sure you go like the page, shoot us a message. We love to communicate with our fans. Well, that's where you can get all the information for us. Justin Taylor's on Facebook. Myself is. I mean, we... We had anybody. I mean, if it wasn't for the fans, we wouldn't be in business. So we appreciate the exposure you've given us. You know, and, and you made a valid point about them coming into town and you liking the attention. But Mickey better be prepared because uh, she's coming in Thursday. We're doing Media Friday. And then Saturday, she's doing her very first ever seminar. And then she's got to wrestle that night. So it's going to be a tough day for her, a long day. So I hope she's rested and ready. You know, uh, you made some good points there, David. And, I, I really appreciate your input that you brought to the table, and hopefully Jasper can take your advice and run with it as well. And I think it's really a good product you got going on with the podcast and the IHW Texas Wrestling Hall of Fame, and I'm really honored to be part of it and what you've included me in thus far. And, and you know, I, I really don't feel like I should be the one to induct us. Yeah, I'm, I know there's other men out there that have known him longer than I have, so... It's going to be an emotional day, and it truly is an honor, brother, and I really appreciate it, and thank you very much. Thank you, Fred and Jasmine. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you both for joining us. Thank Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having us, brother. Have a good one. Thank you. You All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Fred Urban and Jasmine Taylor of OSW Wrestling. They got a huge show coming up this Saturday night, Saved by the Bell. If you want to search OSW Wrestling on Facebook, you can find out all the information. Chavo Guerrero will be challenging Jasmine Taylor for the OSW Heavyweight Championship in the main event. And also that night, it's a double main event because Mickey James, who has held the WWE Women's title, who has been the TNA Women's Champion, the Knockout Champion, she will be in a triple threat match with two of the best female competitors in Texas today. She will be wrestling Dyslexia, who at one time was a former IHWE tag team champion, and Jessica James, who has wrestled all over the world. She was trained by Booker T. She's been the American Josie champion a, a handful of times. So that's going to be big business. We've covered a lot of ground tonight, and what's special about tonight's show is not only did we air an interview with Skandar Akbar, and everybody loves Skandar Akbar, tonight we've kind of gone in a different direction. We've spent a majority of the evening talking about wrestling shows that maybe not everybody will know about. But now because we've done tonight's show, more people know about them. I mean what I say. You go to a good independent show. There are a lot of independent shows out there that are kind of questionable and I mean, that's not my that's not my job to say what's good and what you should support. What I'm saying is, is if you see a good independent show, if you like what you see, as far as promoters go, get a good flyer made because visual presentation perception is a big deal. And if you put if you put a crappy flyer out, that's that's perception. Get a good flyer made. Get some good talent. Get some talent that are going to put butts in seats. And get talent that can go bell to bell. Get some charismatic talent. The the, the 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 players may have changed. The game hasn't. 
you need people that can talk. You need people that look good on posters. You need to put you you need people that can go from bell to bell. Independent shows are supposed to be a mix of everything. There's a little something for everybody. What's good about the two shows we've talked about tonight is the one in Eureka, California, and the one coming up OSW, is there is something for everybody. So make sure you go out and support independent promotions because you never know who you're going to have the opportunity to see. When I went to Will Rogers Coliseum in 1989 and I saw Gorgeous Gary Young and Mick Foley wrestle Eric Embry and Percy Pringle, did I ever think in a million years I would see Mick Foley who would later go on to be the three-time WWE champion, the WWE Hall of Famer? No. Did I think Percy Pringle was going to be one of the greatest characters in the history of the professional, the modern pro wrestling era, Paul Bear? No, I didn't. I mean, when I first started hanging out with Jazz, Jazz and Rodney Mack, did I think Jazz, when I started going to the NWA Southwest show, did I think Jazz was going to be one of the greatest female competitors of the modern era? I think she was going to go to WWE and become a two-time women's champion. And because of her, she helped develop the, the, the one of the better uh, women's eras. No, I didn't. I mean, I knew if she got the opportunity, she would. But some people never get the opportunity. But it seems now that the WWE, and tomorrow night is going to be a prime example, is looking for more wrestlers. Uh, different kind of wrestlers than they were five or six years ago. The Sami Zayn's, the Antonio Cesaro's, the Solomon Crows, Sammy Callahan. Those people are, you know, ruling the ranks down in NXT. Just go see these shows because you just never know who you're going to see. The, the The players may have changed. The game hasn't. So uh, I really like this show tonight. Michael has been hanging there and letting me just ramble on and on and on. I appreciate, Michael, you letting me handle the OSW. Uh, Much like I was earlier, I wasn't too familiar with what's going on in Eureka. So, uh, but I appreciate it. Uh, What are your thoughts on tonight's show? Um, I thought tonight's show was great. Uh, It was a pleasure listening to Fred Urban, and I unfortunately did not catch the other gentlemen's name talking about their show. Um, Gaston. Thank Gaston you for Taylor, the OSW Heavyweight Champion. Thank you. And I do appreciate having you having uh, Joe come on tonight and promote our show March 22nd. Like you said, we do have a little something for everybody that night. Uh, I do have some, I am finding out, I do have some listeners tonight here in Eureka. They're tuning in on the local podcast network here. They're already messaging me asking about tickets and things like that. So we definitely got some attention. Unfortunately, I wasn't a huge fan of your little surprise, um, how you pulled that off. I don't know. You have a few more tricks under your sleeve than uh, I do, unfortunately. <clears throat> but it definitely was a great show. Uh, I have a little bit of a surprise, though. While you okay. were talking with I was doing a few things in the back here and got it. There's a little talking back and forth. And in April... Um, we're still cementing the date, but sometime in April, we are bringing back the devil himself, Derek Drexel, to talk about his match on March 22nd, what the outcome was, whether or not I have any income left or any savings or I had to give away my children to pay the medical bills. But he's also going to talk a little bit about his career. So we're going to have a very interesting indie star come in. As you already heard, one, Derek is a little bit of an interesting character, but as a surprise to kind of, you know, get you back a little bit, we're bringing him back on next month. Or, excuse me, in April. Next month is March. We're bringing him back in April. And we might have the devil's hour that night, David. Well, it's, it, hey, that's good. It doesn't bother me, none. I dig that cat. So, don't bother he, me one bit. Doesn't bother me one bit. One thing we didn't get to talk about tonight that we we meant to was that this past week I announced a new. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this and then I'm not gonna talk about it because I'm not ready to go into any details about it. And I would appreciate everyone respecting my wishes. Before I say this, I don't have a board of directors I have to answer to. I don't have anybody I have to answer to as far as I I am the boss. 
So when I make decisions, I make decisions based on what I want to see and what I think what the fans want to see. This past week, I announced a new IHWE champion, Matt Rudier. Matt is a reality television superstar. He's been wrestling for the last 15 years. He has done some amazing things. He is the IHWE champion. If you want all the news, you need to go to YouTube.com, type in IHWE 2009. Matt is the champion. And when I'm ready to fully disclose why this decision was made in full detail, I will. But right now, I'm not, and I'm not going to be accepting any questions about this. I want everybody to respect the fact that, number one, I don't need to explain myself. Number two, I don't have to answer to anybody as far as this company goes. I make the rules. That's it. But we do have a new IWE champion, and we are working on getting Matt on here as soon as possible. Matt's schedule is very, very hectic. So as soon as he can, he will be on here, hopefully, next month. So I got that out of the way. I believe Matt Riviera is supposed to be here March 19th, which, as usual with Matt Riviera, is the week that I'm not here. So, hmm. Why he agreed to come on. I think, I realize, uh, I, if I remember correctly. I'm sure it is. And as you said, you're give, well, you said you're giving the fans what they want to see, but you give them Matt Riviera, the reality star. Long time. 15-year veteran of professional wrestling. 15-year veteran. You're forgetting that. Sorry. He's an honoree. Hey, hey, hey. He's an honoree of the Cauliflower Alley Club. He was honored by the CAC. They don't just honor anybody. So I've got a real answer. I was there. He was honored by the CAC. Yes, he was. I will take nothing away from a CAC honoree because very, uh, you know, on a great organization, take nothing away from what they do. They chose to honor Matt Riviera. That's fine. I still haven't ever had a chance to meet the guy. All I know is what you tell me, and now I know he's the champion. But as you said, you're the boss. You're my boss, unfortunately. You tell me I have to announce Matt Riviera as the next guest or whatever, then I'll do it. That's okay. I understand you're the boss. Makes you feel big or bigger, whichever the case may be. But I still want to meet Matt Riviera. Hasn't happened yet. Work on it. You will. We'll we'll arrange it. We're going to arrange it for Vegas. Call the Fire Alley Club weekend, folks. And you're going to have to listen that Wednesday. And we'll be talking about it weeks leading up because that's going to be a blockbuster show. Not only will we be counting down the, excuse me, counting down the hours to the return of IHWE to Fort Worth for the IHWE experience. We're going to Michael's going to be live in Las Vegas, and he's going to be uh, calling in throughout the show with guest interviews, news bits. All kinds of stuff from Cauliflower Alley Club Week. It's going to be a big week for the show, and it's one of the biggest weeks of the year for professional wrestling. Next week, we're going to have Jameson on. Jameson was a on-air personality for the World Wrestling Federation from about 1989 through about 1992. You will remember him mostly as Bobby the Brain Heat sidekick on the Bobby Heat show that aired uh, for a few weeks in 1999, I believe in the summer, when Bobby took a hiatus from primetime wrestling. He will be on here on March 5th. March 12th, we will be counting down the hours to the 2014 Texas Wrestling Hall of Fame ceremony. Gorgeous Gary Young will be our guest. as He will be honored uh, that Saturday. March 19th, we will be hearing from a plethora of guests from the 2014 Hall of Fame ceremony because I will be running around with a voice recorder talking to as many people as I possibly can. So uh, that's all coming up on I to be radio next week. Michael, uh, plug, plug the book, plug you, and then we got to go. Plug the book, plug me. Um, yeah, uh, as always, I am the author and creator of Encyclopedia WCCW. We are still planning for an August 2014 release. Definitely looking forward to that. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at EncycloWCCW. And I'm still not on YouTube. I just watch it. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook at Facebook.com backslash Encyclopedia World Class. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, facebook.com backslash IHWE Pro Wrestling. iTunes, you can search this show on the iTunes store. Uh, listen to our archives. I am on Twitter at HXC Fuller. I want to thank Michael. I want to thank Joe Sousa. I want to thank the devil himself, Derek Drexel. I want to thank Fred Irvin. I want to, I want to thank Jasper Taylor, Taylor for all coming on. What? I said, I don't want to thank the devil himself, Derek Drexel. I'm still trying to figure well, out how I'm going to... he was your guest. He was my guest. My show, my guest. So, all right, folks. So, sorry. Next week, it's my show. My show next week. That's right, folks. I'm coming you. back. We will see you next week on I Said Radio. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>